in some way, we can and we can't blame Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He did and he didn't make the decision, right? All he did was delegate this authority. Now, at the time he did that, he and his advisors knew what the plans were. They didn't know the full scope and extent, but they knew the general tenor, that the idea was that what the military would then do is round up specifically people of Japanese descent. That's what was being talked about. That was the primary plan. There were some discussions, by the way. They initially said, well, should we round up people of German background, Italian background? They concluded quickly, no. They concluded no for many reasons, not the least of which it would be impossible. There were just too many. It was only a minority that you could round up, a discrete, insular, smaller minority. People of German descent then and now make up the single largest ethnic group in the United States. More people claim German ancestry than claim the ancestry of any other single nation. Not only that, th these were important voting blocks. If you tried to round up everyone of German ancestry and Italian ancestry, you can bet you wouldn't be reelected, right? So uh, what Franklin Delano Roosevelt did was delegate uh, this authority. And if we continue reading, it's not just this authority. In the next paragraph, he says, I hereby further authorize and direct the Secretary of War and the said military commanders to take such other steps as he or the appropriate military commander may deem advisable to enforce compliance. So they don't just get to set up internment camps. They now have the authority to compel people, to force them into those camps. So uh, as you start to interpret documents like this, it becomes apparent how hidden away in what looks, if you just glance at this casually, you'd have no idea what it meant how hidden away in documents that look like just so much bureaucratic legalese is power, is authority, is policy. And it's not just this document. I would suggest that's generally true, that when people go looking for history, sometimes they think wrongly that history is going to be big, bold, dramatic, that you're going to see it and you're going to know that is history. Well, sometimes, often, History consists of things that if you passed it by, if you just saw this document, you'd have no idea how momentous it is. It's not until it's put into action. So sometimes history is in, is in these details.